I'm Mary Maté sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Misha Pollan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger and our guest Nick Cruz, host and co-founder of the Revolutionary Blackout Network. And uh, here's the latest headline from USA Today. Millions of people will be disenrolled from Medicaid coverage as states resume the eligibility checks that were paused during the pandemic, including 5 million children. Finally. (laughs) And among the benefits that people will lose is dental coverage. Uh, Here's NBC News. More than 14 million people, 28% of adults currently enrolled in Medicaid, are at risk of losing their dental health coverage now that the COVID public health emergency has ended. And here is a brief clip, one of the few mentions in corporate media you'll see about the story on NBC News. An NBC News exclusive, over 14 million adults in the U.S. who are on Medicaid are now at the risk of losing their dental coverage. The public health emergency for COVID-19, originally enacted in 2020, included a rule that protected millions from losing their access to Medicaid during the pandemic. But states are now able to review Medicaid's recipients' eligibility following the end of the public health emergency on April 1st. According to data from the think tank CareQuest Institute for Oral Health, the five states facing the biggest drop in Medicaid coverage are Hawaii, Wyoming, Indiana, Florida, and Illinois. Now to an ex- so we know that re- that Republicans obviously support this, but the Biden administration did not fight to keep those benefits. But meanwhile, they are pushing for more money for Ukraine. So here's the latest announcement. The U.S. is sending another weapons package to Ukraine. This one valued at $325 million, Pentagon officials it's said. It's a small one. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, they're also pushing through more money for submarines. So here's Mark Ames on Twitter. Democrats choosing between spending $200 billion on promised paid family leave to help Americans care for newborns or on submarines that the Navy doesn't use. It was no contest. The boondoggle subs kicked the defenseless babies. Sorry, asses. Well, let's hope they can do it to China now. <laughs> so that, here's the headline. This was initially the headline back in April 2021. Biden wants to spend $225 billion in, its, in his new plan to give you guaranteed sick and family time off work. But guess what happened? Democrats abandoned paid family leave in Biden economic plan. And now, though, we get this exclusive from Newsweek. Navy will spend $200 billion equal to Ukraine's GDP on subs it barely uses. The real, uh, the U.S. Navy can deploy barely a quarter of its attack submarine force at any one time. And last year, despite a war raging in Ukraine and China's rise as a global p- power, only 10 percent of its submarines operated stealthily by spending more than 30 days fully submerged. This is to get ready for a China thing. That's the only thing that will be effective. Uh, what's the guy, Douglas McGregor? Yeah. I was watching him talk about it. He's like, submarines are the thing you need for that, not the... Yeah, but the, the problem is, as, as Newsweek is pointing out, these submarines barely work. They, they can't even deploy them. The conclusion yeah. is stark. American Shh, submarines don't tell China that. Okay. never came <laughs> out in what naval officers call a surge against Russia or China, nor did the overall force ever increase its level of operations. So let me bring in Nick Cruz of Revolutionary Blackout Network. You see these headlines, 14 million people losing Medicaid. Meanwhile, more than $200 billion being earmarked for submarines that don't even work. <coughs> What's your take? Yeah, you have uh, millions of people in the United States losing health care, millions going homeless, uh, income inequality worse than ever. Uh, but the U.S. is focused on militarizing the world. Like if you listen to Xi Jinping, in his speeches, especially when they had a new Congress in China, uh, the, the entire speech was about building. This is what we're going to build. This is our new high-speed rail program. This is how we're going to uplift more people out of poverty. We're going to for, forgive more African debt. We're going to create diplomacy. We're going to create peace. We want prosperity. That is what Xi Jinping says when he speaks. When the United States send their messages, it's nothing but pain, death, and destruction. You have Japan that double its military budget. Imperial Japan is back. After the crimes of Imperial Japan, they decided to be a pacifist nation. And the United States said, nah, nah, son, we're not doing that pacifism. Double your military budget. And now you got Japan and their far right government fear mongering over China. Hey, Japan, how about this? After your crimes that you committed against China in in World War II, the rape of Nanping and many others, how about you shut up about China for the rest of your existence? Not only that, you have Biden. You covered the submarines. They're sending nuclear submarines to Australia. Caitlin Johnston has done a great job documenting the insane propaganda they're feeding Australian citizens 
to go to war with China. So while China is focused on building, the United States ha- is on an unending war path where they do not want the war in Ukraine to end, where they, they where they pressure Japan to militarize, German, uh, German, uh, Germany, Germany, Germany is militarized again because of pressure of the United States. All the members of NATO have been pressured to increase the military budget. Meanwhile, China is focused on building, but they are considered the evil ones. Now, don't get twisted, guys. I'm not saying China is perfect, but China does not have to be. You guys understand? China is ordered. Why are we not mag- doing that? Why aren't we competing with China by building more roads if it's so yes. bad that they do that? Exactly. Exactly. And you, you would think that even if you have criticisms of, of how China's run this country, that you will want us to work with China. We should be working with China to uplift the global working class, to uplift, uh, to increase the quality of life for everyone. The United States is doing the exact opposite, and it has the Chinese and their allies bewildered. They've been begging the United States not to send Nancy Pelosi uh, to, t- to Taiwan. Now, C- Kevin McCarthy, which is, I believe, a week or two ago, they're begging the United States not to escalate. Of course, they will defend their territory, but they're begging them not to do this. But they are anyway. That's why on revolutionary blackout, our focus is holding our government accountable for this nonsense. Now, to the original story about uh, them privatizing and stripping healthcare uh, funds for people, this also exposed how evil the liberal mind is. Because we expect this from conservatives and Republicans. You mentioned that uh, Republican support system in the, in, the support pl- in the first place. But on the mindset of a liberal, I'm talking about like, you should imagine, I'm talking about the, Ma- the Amy Klobuchar <laughs> Supporting liberal, the Joe Biden supporting liberal, the, the Democratic liberal that is not for universal health care. They are 100 percent OK with someone getting free health care because they had COVID, because they view someone getting COVID as not your fault. There's a pandemic. It's not your fault. You got sick just because you got sick because you got COVID. Don't, that doesn't mean you should be uh, uh, bankrupted. My question to these liberals is what's the difference between COVID and cancer? Why is it OK to provide health care? To people because they got COVID nineteen, but they get cancer. They get cancer. They screwed. You guys see the problem here? Everything's okay? an emergency if you don't have any goddamn healthcare. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And 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 once again, I'm I'm farther to the left than most of the. Well, actually, I wouldn't say that. That's untrue because most people believe in universal healthcare. But the the right wingers Demo- believe in it in Europe. Yeah, so that's why <laughs> I had a dude from it. Lotus Eaters on my show talking, and he's saying all this concern. You know, low taxes. He's yeah. Scottish. I like him a lot. He's a good guy too. He go and I go. What about, you know? We have this. I was talking about surprise billing. That thing that Biden was supposed to fix, and he never did. And uh, he goes, "Oh, we well, yeah, obviously you get health care." <laughs> a yeah. right winger in Europe, they're like, yeah. "Of course you get health care." What are you talking about? Yep. Yeah. So to correct myself, it's, I'm not radical. It's actually a mainstream position, but it's considered radical uh, in, in Washington. It's considered ra- radical for everyone to have health care, uh, even though it say it, it it drastically saves money. But a, a liberal cannot explain to you why it's okay to cover someone for COVID but not cancer. But to my point earlier, I like you have Democrats that they say stuff and they think they're sa- that sound progressive. Like they will say stuff like, "We should lower the Medicare uh, Medicaid age to 60. My question is, okay, so if you're 58, you, you deserve to die <laughs> with, with cancer. Like yeah. these are things that are morally uh, mm-hmm. I can't grapple with, and that's why um, uh, we are post duopoly leftists. Anyone who allow People to die without health care, I consider irredeemable. Like what Kurt said, like people who are right wingers in Europe in Europe support health care. I covered this poll a long time ago. One out, like it's like one out of three people who consider themselves to be ultra conservative support Medicare for all. And so there's most right wingers who support Medicare for all. We know that, but you assume that like the most hardcore right would support it. No, that's not true. One out of three of the hardcore right people in America, as they self-identify support Medicare for all. So you have Joe Biden that's to their right. They are the most unhinged right-wing MAGA supporter. Trump, uh, uh, Biden, I mean, and Democratic Party is to their right. And that's why we need to draw, draw a hard line in the stand as a working class uh, movement on this issue. Nick Cruz, host, co-founder of Revolutionary Blackout Network. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me, Aaron. This show is always fun to do. Make sure you guys check us out on Revolutionary Blackout. I watch you guys, guys. do. I watch uh, Revolutionary Blackout. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one, guys. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special, COVID Lies Are Funny. Ha, 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 ha.